Hey, another devlog, and this is what I've been working on. So uh, I've, I'm finally with font handling, and it works just fine. And I can't uh, like it is completely integrated with the rest of the engine, so the transforms work. I can handle this as any other regular image or sprite or mesh or whatever, which is very nice. <laughs> very nice. Uh, so it is working. I'm using, as I said before, that I will be using, I'm using STB image. Let me show you what the font class looks like. It is very simple. So I can create the class. I can optionally pass the, the file path in order to load the font. But if I don't want to, if I want to do this later on, I can simply create a font with a default resolution and to define if it is pixelated or not. And the reason why I have a resolution and pixelated is because uh, the font is actually an image. It does have an image for the Atlas, which is, I mean, let me show you what is this Atlas real quick. I have it here. This probably easy enough to show you like this this is the font atlas this is an image with all the characters of the font so you can see all the uppercase and the lowercase i believe this is Dario, uh, a font that comes from um, by default on windows and I actually made this here. I can create a sys font. This is a new U2s function that I created to get a system font. And this was me testing it. And this is me initializing the font and passing this, you know. And then Henry, hello world. Can hand something else. Can handle something else, of course. And it works just fine. Um, and as I said in the previous video, I ended up talking a lot about the fonts. The font class is very simple. I wanted it to be very simple. It does have two constructors. One if I want to pass the file and the other if I don't want to, as I said. It does have a copy constructor. The destructor does have nothing. But it have a news method that I basically use to bind the, the texture atlas, which is this one here. So it is internally binding it. Let me actually show the implementation. As you can see, this is what, what is happening. And I have the build atlas. If I build a, an atlas with the file path, I don't need to build it again. But if I don't, I need to, I want, and if I want to, I can pass uh, a file for a font and it will build for me just fine, okay? But the most important, function here is probably the handler because I can give I can provide a string and a size and the tracking which is the spacing between the letters and it will return a mesh for me and this mesh I can use to handle with this image the font so this is how font hand handling works this is the backends uh, I'm not going to go into details this is mostly um, stb true type working here but yes it is very simple and as you can see the the C++ file does have 130 lines, so which is this is not a lot. So the constructor basically just mem set the characters to zero, and the second constructor builds the atlas for you. So it is basically the same as not passing the atlas in, passing later on. The constructor doesn't doesn't need to do anything, and the build atlas. This first part part is basically the me reading from from disk so i'm using f open here and then i'm doing some assertions to make sure everything is correct and then i'm reading the entire data into this unsigned char right here fine right and then the second part is me baking the, the bitmap using stb true type as i said so this is all the parameters that it get and the two important things here is it will build an alpha map and this is how stb true type works and the alpha map I'm allocating here with the resolution times the resolution, because again, I don't need X, Y, and Z or RGB. I only need the alpha channel. And then the number of phone characters, which is 255 at the moment. And then of course, the, the characters to bake. This is a, an array with individual characters. If I go back here, you can see. And this is like STB true type information, okay? so. It will use this to map 
the each character into a space, into a slot in memory, in, not in memory, sorry, in the UV map that correspond to that specific character. And this is basically mapping the reason why there's 255 characters, and I'm defining this right here, is because the exit ASCII table does have 256, I guess, characters, and I'm just using 55. I don't remember why, but it is what it is, right? So it is mapping for that table here. And the STB to type is doing everything for me. And in the end, I'm basically getting the data, the alpha material here, and setting pixel by pixel of my texture atlas texture to be all white, and then the alpha will have the alpha value of my texture, okay? Um, I could have done this differently. I could have modified the texture to support uh, single channel textures to only store this in the R axis of my textures, the red channel, of course. But I want to keep this library very simple. So I decided to only support RGBA textures. And this is why I'm setting it this way. So it's all white in the, like, if, if there is a texture or not, if there's a font or not, is divided by the alpha channel. And that's fine by me, okay? And then I'm submitting the atlas to the GPU again. I need to call this whenever I change a pixel. So I need to do this. And finally, I'm garbage collecting the, the stuff that I created here. Very simple. And last but not least, let me go ahead. Oh, I have the copy constructor here. Hmm, I don't like copy constructor here. Hmm. I'll leave it because I've already committed and I don't want to commit the symbol fix. But anyways, and then I have the, I, I was about to just move this up. But anyways, then I have the handler, which is where the fun happens because I have my text and for every single character of my text, I basically get the information about this character, about the glyph itself. And then I build a mesh that is a single quad per every single glyph that does have the, the correct width and height and the offset as well. And then I append to my output mesh, which is this one. I can rename this to output, but it's fine like this. Okay. And this is where I'm basically building the mesh to handle the text. It's very simple, very straightforward. Um, but I also center the mesh in the end. There are better ways to do this. I could just reuse this previous for loop and store the last number, but oh, it's fine to have like the min and max here and then center it with the offset. Um, it's fine, okay? So this is just to make sure that the center of my mesh is actually the center of the text because that makes your life way easier. Otherwise, it will be, if you have a weird offset, let me show you actually. If I comment out this line, and rebuild. You can see that the center of the mesh was supposed to be here, but it is uh, was supposed to be here, sorry, but it is actually here. So the mesh probably starts here. And the, the problem is that if I decided to rotate this, for example, oh, I accidentally pressed ask to close. You can see that it is rotating around this axis, which is wrong, you know very wrong. I still don't have aspect ratio before you say anything. That's why you're seeing this weird stretching, but this is a very easy fix, like so easy that I don't even bother to fix this until it's time to do it. Okay. But anyways, so this is why I centered the mesh because with this centered, it's easier, you know? Yeah, that's it. Let me actually, I'm a bit bothered by the naming here. I said that it would not change this just to have better naming, but well, I changed my mind. I'll do this live. So the copy constructor should be here. And this should work out of the box. Yes. So that's it. We have text handling and it is 100% integrated with the rest of the engine, which is very nice, very great, um, and and yes, <laughs> that's it. So what is next? What is the next step? We have audio. Let me play an audio. We have text handling, we have handling in general, we have shaders and a bunch of other cool stuff. Uh, what is next? I believe they're now 
maybe physics will be a great idea, but in order to do physics, I need to have at least like a better uh, core concept because at the moment I don't have a concept of what is um, a sprite, what is a game object, and I don't even know, I haven't decided this yet. And this is like the last time probably this engine will look very generic because this is like the the core, like the foundations that you need in order to create a game. And um, for now on, it will be less like this and a bit more like a specific stuff for a specific type of game, because I will introduce some core stuff. I, I'm not sure how I will call this. I need to decide all that, but it will start to look a little bit more like a, a game, you know, a game engine, sorry. Anyways, I think I want to to make this separate. I'll actually make another video for this feature for for this because I have some ideas about this. Anyways, that's it, folks. Uh, I hope you enjoy, and I see you in the next video.